Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Britons have less chance of working than migrants. 100% renewable energy is here. The EU mandates all new cars be outfitted with a device to call in case of a crash. Labour MPs to abstain on EU referendum bill. Plus, in your letters, the European Union to the United States of Europe. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, foreign men are more likely to have a job in the UK than British workers, a shock report revealed yesterday. In stark illustration of how immigration has changed Britain, male migrants have had higher levels of employment than native-born men in the last five years, says the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development. The UK has, along with Germany, also taken in the largest number of migrants fleeing countries most affected by the economic crash, with numbers rising by 45% from 2009 to 2011. Two questions for you. How many countries in the world source their electricity 100% from renewable sources? And which major European nation that is well endowed with renewable energy resources is the worst at exploiting them? The answers can be gleaned from the recently updated International Energy Statistics of Electricity Generation from the Energy Information Administration, or EIA, of the US Department of Energy. The sources of the statistics are many from most countries in the world and not necessarily directly comparable, but have been homogenised as far as possible to make them so. The figures are up to date to 2011 and in some cases 2012. It's often said by opponents of renewable energy that too much of it is a bad thing. It results in unreliable supplies of electricity. How come then several countries source most of their electricity from renewable energy and two rely on it 100%? These two countries are Norway and Iceland. Iceland has been at it since 1980. Admittedly, it's a tiny country and is well blessed with hydropower and geothermal, which provides 74% and 26% of the electricity respectively. Norway, with a larger population of 5 million, has also been running almost exclusively on renewable hydroelectricity since 1980. However, it also has recently added other renewables, wind and biomass. Of course, this supports my report earlier this week about favouring anaerobic digestive biomass over wind turbines. The EU wants all new passenger cars fitted out by October 2015 with a life-saving automatic dial-up system so emergency workers can speed to the site of a crash as swiftly as possible. When an accident happens, every minute counts. The bloc's transport commissioner, Slim Kallas, said Thursday on proposing new legislation enabling vehicles to automatically call for help in case of an accident. Last year, 28,000 people died and 1.5 million were injured on EU roads. The European Commission says the automatic e-call system could speed up emergency response by as much as 40% in built-up areas and 50% in the countryside, saving up to 2,500 lives a year. The e-call system automatically calls 112, Europe's single emergency number, in the event of a serious crash, communicating the vehicle's location, even if the driver is unconscious or unable to make a call. Now, we may need to make some changes to accommodate this in the UK. I mean, the last thing you want in an accident is your vehicle calling directory enquiries, 112, 112. Or perhaps that's 118, 118. Labour MPs will be told not to vote on a Tory bill to guarantee a referendum on Britain's membership of the EU. David Cameron has promised to put a new deal on EU membership to the electorate in a referendum by 2017 and the Tories are proposing a bill to enshrine the commitment in law. However, despite unease among senior Labour figures, Ed Miliband's office is telling his MPs they should stay away from Parliament or abstain in any vote on the Tory bill next month. Ah, there's nothing like watching a good, solid, representative democracy in action. 
Sadly, the Millie Cameron Bankster Puppet Muppet Army is nothing like one. In a letter to Andrew, Roger Wright Morris attaches his manuscript and he writes... Here is an article sent at the end of February 2013 to David Cameron and my MP and Deputy Tory Party Chairman Sarah Newton. As you would expect, I have heard absolutely nothing from either of them. We must beware be being unprepared for both renegotiation to stay in arrangements that the UK seek to leave. There seems no need to give the notice we just leave, but we need their cooperation on post-departure trade, etc., I agree that non-EU trade is more and more valuable, but it would be good for all EU countries to have a departure mechanism as anything unilateral will hurt all countries in the EU as well as the UK. The Scots have shown us how not to do it. Thanks, Andrew, and regards, Roger Wright. So, Roger's manuscript is a simply excellent piece of writing and is precisely the type of well-thought-out article we believe our community values. The article is in-depth, but here is just an excerpt. The question before the British people is whether the inevitable congruence of states to form this United States of Europe is what the British want. If so, the pending renegotiations will be carried out easily. If not, then there will be a much more drawn-out set of negotiations. Clearly, Brussels seeks complete integration. Who in Britain wishes the same? A common currency, fiscal regime, central bank, president, parliament, police, armed forces, politics, foreign policy and rules and regulations of a united Europe. Well, Roger, thank you for taking the time to write to us, and we really are delighted with your work. Please do keep writing, as we do welcome all articles. Today, in our video library, we revisit our Betrayed documentary. Now, in 1973, the UK joined the European Economic Community. This video shows how the British people were deceived into assimilation into a federal European superstate. This is a contest entry for the Paul Revere competition at Infowars.com and it sets out how liberty and sovereignty of the UK has been taken from its people and exposes the structures now in place and poised to realise a tyrannical federal superstate known as the European Union. We again need your help to increase the views and likes on this video as the greater its popularity the more promotion it gets on YouTube. I have provided links directly to the YouTube page and please do feel free to make comments and click the thumbs up like button too. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the e Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the words section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+, links to the community page are below.